Hi, this is Survivor from Scrappy Mania, and today I am going to work in my art journal. The materials I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this Bloom Doll Collection from Jamie Doherty. So I'll be using this stamp, and this is Jing. I'm also going to be using this mini butterfly stencil that I got at Hobby Lobby. This is another stencil that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I do not know the name of this stencil, but I'm going to be using this one. And then this is from Americana. This is another stencil that I think I'm going to be using there. I'm going to go ahead and prep my page with some absorbent ground because I am going to be using some of these watercolor paints. And one tip, instead of buying those expensive palettes for your watercolors, I got this at um, my local Goodwill sh store, and it's going to be perfect for my watercolors because I can mix the, the water, and it's not going to beat up, and it's going to be very nice. So that's just something that you can use. So let me go ahead and start prepping my page. So I'm going to put some of the absorbent ground, and I'll be back. Okay, so now my um, my absorbent ground is dry, and I had a viewer ask me what absorbent ground is, and what it is is a type of gesso, but it's made for watercolors because it absorbs the the color, the watercolor or the the paint, so it doesn't move as much. If you notice, I have a a, a video where I compare absorbent ground and regular gesso. With the regular gesso, as you spray or you put things down. The watercolor doesn't absorb in the paper, so it has more time to kind of mix together, make a little more mud. Um, you know, like a muddy cutter color, it's not really bright. When I do use just um, absorbent ground before I use my watercolors, I notice that my paper, my um, images are more crisp. They're more true to the color, and it really doesn't mix as much, um, which I like. So here I'm just going to take my stamp. This is Jing. What's the name of this one? Is Jing by um, Jamie Doherty. And I'm using Archiva ink. You can use stays on. But you need to use an ink that it's not going to react with water. You cannot use... Um, well, you can use it, but it doesn't, you know, if you like that all the colors kind of blend together, you can use um, your distressing inks. But if you want to keep the image nice and crisp, I recommend that you use um, some type of, of either a Carvo ink or stays on or things that, not, an ink that's not going to react with water. So I'm going to put this down. And then I'm going to just press it. And make sure it's nicely pressed on your page. And then lift it up. Now that, I'll just use some acrylic paint and just paint over that. But so far, it looks good. I can go over it with a thin marker. And I can go over a little more with my um, Sharpie pen and really define it, the outline, a little better. So um, I am going to cover that with some acrylic paint. So that's what some acrylic skin color paint. And I'll get rid of the black ink mark on her face. So here I'm just taking my um, watercolor paints. I'm mixing it with a little bit of water and just blending the colors barely. But if I would have just used gesso instead of absorbent ground when I was doing this um, the background treatment, all the colors would have mixed together and it wouldn't have stayed how you see. You can really see the blue on one side and the yellow and the green on the other side. It would have just all mixed. So I really like absorbing ground when I am using watercolors. So I'm just painting in her flowers and then using a little bit of white to kind of make it a little more um, three-dimensional. And now I'm ready to paint her face. So what I'm using is my acrylic paint. And I the acrylic paint is thicker. 
So um, one of the tricks that I do is I do water it down a little bit with water and that helps smooth the background just a tiny bit. And um, as you can see the her profile or her the 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 stamp image is kind of blending in the background. So what you do is you'll see in a moment after you go ahead and finish all your layers of colors and your shading you go over it the last thing that you're going to do is go over it with some blank ink like I'm doing now some black paint and just redefine all those outline and all those lines and see how she just pops now you can really see the colors her eyes and everything so here I'm giving her some rosy cheeks now I try to use some of my pastels um, chalk to do her rosy cheek but that didn't work well and then here I'm using a ghost technique by taking my stencil, a wet uh, wipe, and I use that for the doily background. And then I took some more, another cosmetic sponge with my leftover watercolors, and I'm just putting that on the background with my stencil. And one trick that I want to um, give you is that when you are using stencil and a uh, a sponge or a makeup sponge do not press very hard because it will blur your outline so I kind of learned that as I was doing this page so don't don't lightly tap the stencil with your um, paint so I this is the final um, layout so I hope you like this video and thank you for watching bye now